this is one of their mobile kitchens that they actually is that even some uh, what I call habitual beautiful stop and shop in the Wilton penalty but it was actually a tax and that it Hello and welcome to the Marty Heiser Show. Before we do anything, I got to have a big shout out to Tony Simon. Tony, you know who you are. We love you. You're the number one fan of this show and we just think the world of you. Tony Simon, I salute you. I understand you have a birthday coming up, so uh, it might be a week early, but happy birthday, and we're glad you're here. Now, for those of you that tuned in last week, we had two hours, two hours of a debate of the candidates running for the Republican nomination for the state of Connecticut. Two hours of lots and lots of information. Tonight, we're going wall-to-wall -wall round table with some of the most erudite, some of the most in, important, some of the most intelligent people you'll ever meet. They come with an international perspective, and we're going to be talking about the events of the day, we're going to be talking about Donald Trump one year in, and we're going to be talking about a concept called Rogue Spooks. This is a book by the famous author Dick Morris, and it talks about how the FBI and the Department of Justice Yay, let, let me say the IRS under Barack Obama has been politicized and it was used to go after Donald Trump, the candidate, talk about colluding in a national election, and then Donald Trump, the president-elect. It's an incredible book. It's by Dick Morris, who, by the way, lives right here in Redding, Connecticut, although I understand he winters in Florida. Um, but we may hear from Dick Morris as well and his book, Rogue Spooks. Now, the phone lines are open too, 438-2008, 438-2008. If you want to join us, go ahead and call in. If there's something we're missing, if we need to hear from Rich about global warming, or we need to hear from some others, don't hesitate to call in. We'll put you right on the air. But sit back. It's a rainy night, and enjoy some of these guests we have. Evangelos, thank you hey, so much for you, joining Mark. us. Dave Strait, straight from the swamp. Pr prima donna extraordinaire. Of, uh, do you like uh, does Dick Morris in Reading? He's ever come over for a, a cup of tea? He's never called me, but we'll do lunch. All right. And Patrick Hale, an extraordinary man. Uh, straight from Ireland. You want to talk? Hey, you want to talk uh, investments? You want to talk World War II history? You want to talk television and the media? That's the guy to talk to. But Dave, we'll start with you. Oh, that's always a mistake. A year in, what are your thoughts about Donald Trump? Well, what are your thoughts about the uh, the speech he gave to the Joint Session of Congress, um, the State of the Union address? Well, well, let me just say, for starters, you know, occasionally Trump is wrong, and when he swears no collusion, he was dead wrong. Clearly collusion, just not on his side of the team. I mean, everything that's coming out now, we well, talked about draining the swamp early on. So what's happening? Clearly, there's collusion. Everything that's coming out is collusion between the Democrats, the DNC, and fusion, and, and everything else. So here's what I get a kick out of. There's a report that I think is going to be pretty damaging that's going to come out tomorrow. Uh -huh. And what are the Democrats doing? They're screaming, saying it was non-verified. So that has them deeply concerned. Uh -huh. Did they ever raise any concerns when Fusion GPS was going to release their memo that it wasn't verified? Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, for the FBI to submit an unverified, wholly fraudulent document to the FISA courts, yeah. and that is the basis for this whole investigation. And I was thinking about this the other day. You know, you can have sworn subpoena, you know, someone under subpoena going in under oath in complete confidentiality. By the next day, within a 24-hour news cycle, videos of that person testifying show up. How do they ever get out? Yeah. The moral of the story is here we are one year later not a shred, not one scintilla evidence that the, de that the Republicans or Trump or anybody did anything with the Russians other than get set up to go to meetings where nothing ever happened. Yeah. 
No, it is, inc it is incredible. That's our America, and Marty. What, what they're showing, this memo, this Nunes memo that's going to come out, it's four pages. Mm -hmm. And what I understand, there's these FISA courts, which are secret courts, if they want to spy on someone, like, uh, like Evangelist. He strikes me as an international... Spy on an American. <laughs> sorry, yeah, he strikes <laughs> me as something like an international spy, and they'll say, <laughs> if we're going to spy on an American, we have to have evidence and present evidence. Mm -hmm. Well, there was no evidence for Trump. They got rejected the first time they, they went to the courts. They got because there was no evidence. So they went out and they put together this, this dossier and just so you know, in this dossier, there was one guy, and, he, and uh, Dick Morris talks about it in his book, but there's one guy who was like Rich Schwartz or something that worked for Donald Trump. And they said Rich Schwartz met in a cafe in Prague with Russian agents and so forth. And Trump's like, hey, Schwartz, get in here. And he goes, your boss, boss, I've never been to Prague, never been. He goes, get your passport. He gets his passport, shows me he's never been to Prague. And so what did the FBI say? Well, maybe it was a different Rich Schwartz. And then he goes through and they said that there are these oligarchs in Russia, and they say, oh, he's colluding with these oligarchs. They misspelled the names of these oligarchs. This is in the dossier. Mm -hmm. And then, and this, if there's children around, maybe, you know, send them in the other room I'll or something like that. I'll bet they didn't like even that. spell oligarch right. I, I don't even know how to spell oligarch. <laughs> but they, they, they talk about, um, they talk about, uh, uh, how he had this, you know, this situation with a lady or a group of ladies of the knights oh, yeah. and so forth. It's just reprehensible. I'm sure Bill had none of those things. And it's just made up out of whole cloth. And the guy's a germaphobe. He doesn't even like shaking hands. I doubt what they were describing in this fake dossier. And Bill Clinton happened. got half a million dollars to go to Moscow, and I'm sure he did nothing. Yeah, I'm, well, I, I don't, but but it, here's here's the issue. If you want to cut to the chase on all of this, please. You've heard the, no, the name Peter Stroke, or Struck, or however you pronounce it. No, yeah. I've got okay. a picture of him. Do you know what his job was at the FBI? Does anybody know what it is? I think it was heading up the Hillary. Uh, he was Hillary. heading, no, he was heading up counterintelligence. Okay. Wow. Now, as we all know, the FBI is the lead agency to look into anything our foreign adversaries do in the United States, especially the Russians. Mm. Mm. Now, let's understand that. That's, then you have uh, or. Orr was looking into the Steele dossier, and his wife was actually working at GPS that produced it. Okay, now, why this is really important, the heck with the emails at this point. That means Strzok would have known if there was any collusion whatsoever. Any! Yeah. Well, well he denied it when he was first no, asked to I, get on board. No, this, that's the whole point. Sorry. We are now down the road, there was six months from the election, to before Mueller was actually uh, appointed. So in those six months, if there was a scrap of evidence, a scrap of evidence of any collusion between the Russians and Trump, Strzok would have known it. Yeah. Wouldn't they have leaked this? I mean, Comey sure. was leaking <sighs> stuff. Sure, he admitted would, it. Wouldn't in all world. of them have leaked it if there was something? Yeah. How do you explain there wasn't anything leaked in six months and there still hasn't been in 13 months when they're all under fire. It's because there is nothing. There's nothing there. Nothing. You, you, you can't make it up. You, there's nothing there. So they come up with this dossier that is like the perfect, you know, understanding of what they thought was going on or made of going on. This is what their ideal. And there was no way to get that into the public until they... Hey, John McCain, you hate Trump, too. <laughs> yeah, I hate Trump, too. So he says, tell you what, I'm going to get this to you, and I want you to leak it or give it to the FBI. And then they had the FBI put it in their daily intelligence briefing. Yeah. And when you get in the daily intelligence briefing, no. everyone in Congress gets copied. No, no, you know, no, no, Pelosi, no, no. here's your who, copy. Here's who your gets copy. the daily briefing? Obama. Thank you. Yeah, Obama Remember, got the daily briefing. all the election... Obama was the president of the United States. Yeah. If the Russians were really doing this, yeah. where was he? And so then, you know, there's a, there's a couple times when, you know, the liberals' heads explode. <laughs> and the one time was when Donald Trump tweeted, the uh, Obama administration has wiretapped my phones in Trump Tower. Everyone exploded. Oh, my gosh, how could you say that? It can't happen. It just can't. Well, guess what? It did happen. And guess what? This memo outlines how it, how it happened. And guess what? It's all in this book by Dick Morris as well, uh, Rogue Spooks. It's, it's right there. It did happen.
Now, people may say they does, don't want to know, but it did happen. Does the name Snowden mean anything to you guys? Yeah, and the funny thing is, <laughs> when you have the liberals, like right now there's this movie, I don't know, it's called The, the Press or something like that, with Meryl Streep and, and, and the other guy, and they're oh, talking yeah, about... Oh, the Washington Post during Watergate. The Washington Watergate. Post. Yeah. Yeah. And Watergate. And they're, they're, yeah, it was during Watergate, but they were getting the, uh, the Vietnam papers out there. And uh, and when they and when they did that, you know, they said, "Oh, we'll, we want to release these. We're going to do it for sure, no matter what, come hell or high water." And now they're saying, "Oh, we shouldn't release the four pages of this memo outlining how the federal government was used in a in a live election against an alternate candidate. We don't want that out." Does this ever happen in Greece? <laughs> a, lot, a lot of things happen in Greece. <laughs> worse, worse, much worse than that. In Greece, they're, well, they're going to continue. That's trying to avoid it. They're going to continue. The Democrats are attacking Donald Trump on issues that are not relevant. And what are relevant today, mm -hmm. and you saw, you saw it in the State of the Union, that Donald Trump has done extremely well <coughs> in the economics part, yep. right? Yep. And, um, and uh, he, he's the first president after Ronald Reagan that he gave a lot of credit to the people, to the to American people, for yeah. the work that has been done for the past year. You know, everybody talks about uh, his big ego, right? Yeah, yeah, his yeah. big ego, he says I and I and I. But he was talking all about the American people, no, how I much guess. work they had done for a year and how much, you know, they had built for, for a year. And uh, the no, stock I think market? You're right. I think that most people have not mentioned the fact that there was a different, uh, a different Ronald Reagan. It was def certainly different Ronald Reagan. Sure, it was sure. Donald Trump. It was a decidedly different Donald Trump who stat, uh, uh, stood there yeah. and addressed the Congress than the one a year ago. Another thing that impressed me was uh, the immigration issue. That, yeah. you know, he was coming so, or they thought, he was so aggressive and so out of line and was so as far as the immigration that he was, you know, he talks, it's logic what he's talking about, yeah. is to eliminate merit-based. Merit merit um, yeah, well, that's why um, Pelosi couldn't understand. Right, merit-based uh, immigration to eliminate the visa lottery, which yeah. is, you know, you bring only people that, you know, that you don't know who they are. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one of those was the guys that, that drove over everyone on the West Side Highway. Right, highway. right. You know, that, exactly. One of those, you know, what did Trump call one of the, those immigration lottery views exactly. that came over. And the, third, and the third thing that impressed me in, in his uh, State of Union was the huh? foreign, his uh, foreign policy. Um, and uh, the, he mentioned all of the oppressive uh, regimes all over the world yeah. and how he, you know, he's going to take care of that and how he, he has done for a year, he has done a great job. And, uh, you know, that's what we should be focusing on, the positives and not, you know, all the other stuff that are ir irrelevant. But they're not going to go, they're not going to stop. They're going to continue on that. So here, I got a little uh, anecdotal story mm -hmm. for you I, I want to share. And I, I kind of feel sorry for my friend because, you know, he had a heart attack in the situation. But um, he works for a French firm, right. huge firm, 300,000 employees, CEOs, French. When I tell you this guy wakes up, eats, breathes, hating Trump every minute of his life. Right. And he's been going to Davos for about 30 years. So he goes to Davos and he just can't wait to take a bite out of the president. Uh -huh. So at the end of Davos, um, you know, or in the middle of Davos, they get him on stage and they do, you know, those interviews, CNBC, backdrop, you know, in the mountains and beautiful setting and all the rest. Yeah. And, you know, the guy, MSNBC, can't wait for this guy to be all negative on Trump because he knows he hates Trump. Yeah. He goes, so, well, how, you know, what do you think about Trump and Davos? He goes, guy's amazing. This guy really connects with people. He really pulled it all together. He understands the global economy. I get it. I can't believe it. So my, my friend who just stepped out of the shower, his wife calls, you gotta hear this. Yeah. He steps and he sees him doing this and he fell on the floor, he had a heart attack right there. It's really sad. <laughs> really? Oh, oh my God, my age. It took the hook. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh. We have that we have this video and I'd like to play it if we could, Cheryl. Um the uh, um, basically talks about some of the Trump voters a year in. This is sort of a cross-section of people that voted for Trump and why they did in Ohio. And it's interesting, it's interesting to see. Um, just take a listen. And it's from Sounding CNN. Sounding off on the president's job performance. Just shy of one year in, is he living up to their expectations? Here's CNN's Martin Savage in Youngstown. Anywhere you look in Youngstown are reminders of what's been lost. Factories, jobs, the city's population is down by almost two-thirds from the 1950s. The economy wasn't just disappearing here, so was a way of life. And I realized that uh, the core foundation country is slipping away. I mean, it got to a point where I did not like the direction that my country was going. The answer for many was Donald Trump. 
In 2016, according to the Mahoning County Board of Elections, approximately 7,000 registered Democrats switch parties to become Republicans. Ouch. He said he's going to make America first and he's going to bring jobs back. Donald Trump says you're in lousy trade deals. We fix that, the jobs can come back. Something that he said that really sticks with me is that he wants to give the power back to the American people, and that's something that I can certainly get behind. I'm with a pastor, a stay-at-home mom, a student, a machine shop worker, and a union member. Democrats or raised in Democrat families who crossed over to vote Trump. We're one year. One year in. How's he doing? Fantastic. Phenomenal. Great. Better than I ever would have dreamt. <laughs> I mean, that sincerely. Really? Oh, yeah. Derek? Yeah. Yes, I yes, agree. Absolutely. Yes, he's doing wonderful. He's staying on task. We start with a hot-button topic of the moment. How big an issue to all of you? is immigration. Huge. Huge. Really? Absolutely. Yeah. In Youngstown, Ohio. Absolutely. Absolutely. And as far as I'm concerned, they're stealing jobs of rightful citizens. It's also about something else Trump voters say is important. Rules and respect. Um, I feel like when people come here illegally, that's just very disrespectful. You don't respect our laws and you shouldn't be able to come here free willing like that. A year later, they all still want the wall. As for the president's inflammatory tweets and speech, Gino says he used to cringe. Not anymore. So you don't cringe anymore because you've grown numb to it, or? No, not, not numb at all, but I know what he's done. And I, I'm, I'm starting to get an inkling why he uses Twitter in the way he does. Because if all he had to rely on is what people say about him, oh my God, I might not like the guy. <laughs> but I love the guy. I love the job he's doing. Justice met Trump at a rally and says he's not a racist. He was just the nicest person. and. He, if he was a racist, as everyone picked, um, paints him out to be, he could have just walked right past me and not even said a word. What about the lies? Well, let me ask you this. Do you think he is a liar? Do I think he's lied? No. Do I think he's fallen short in some of his goals? We all do. Economically, they say things aren't getting better. The stock market and their home values are up. Industries are booming um, everywhere I'm, I've, I've seen. I look around here, I don't see a boom. Well, uh, in this area, no, but I, I feel like uh, there's small businesses that are starting to pick up. Derek says Trump's tax reform will fuel the recovery. If you expand your business in the inner city, so then my community will benefit from this tax cut. Do you think the media gives the president a fair shake? I don't think so at all. <laughs> no. One year later, these voters couldn't be happier. They see achievement. Most of all, they see a president like them. And he's like tenacious sometimes and says stuff off the cuff like we do, like real Americans do. You know, we're not perfect. I'm tired of suave. I'm tired of polished. I'm tired of the teleprompter. You know, I am. I, I want my country back. Martin Savage, CNN, Youngstown, Ohio. Oh. You know, we really, we really got to give a shout out to someone that's kind of near and dear to you, Marty. Was that CNN? No, no, Carolyn. Because Carolyn? she was the early mover on the whole Trump wave. I remember when we came in here about two years ago and we were talking about this. Right, right. And she was like, Dave, you don't get it. I go, Dude, this guy has no history of being a conservative. Uh -huh. She goes, no, 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 you don't get it. This guy's a change agent. This uh -huh. guy's going to bring about change. Uh -huh. And this guy's batting about 99% so far. I'll tell you, yes. So when you uh -huh. see her next time, tell her I said that. So, caller, you just saw from CNN a series of former Democrats extolling Donald Trump's first year. Did you want to echo those sentiments? Well, your, uh, your phone's really breaking up, Marty. I hope I'm coming through okay. You're coming through loud and clear. Sure is cold out tonight. Well, what's up? What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on Donald Trump? Can you hear can you hear me all right? I can hear you perfectly. Go right ahead. Okay. Well, what I want to know is, when Trump lies to you, what do you? What is your response? Like when Trump lies every day, does that bother you? That no, name a lie. Own accustomed, accustomed to having him lie, and you don't care. I mean, what happened? So, like, for example, when he said when he said that the Obama administration wiretapped Trump Tower, are you talking about that lie? Now, what you are you mean? talking about when we're going to bomb the you-know-what out of ISIS? Are you talking about that lie? When you talk about he was going to reduce regulations two to one, and he's done that, you're talking about that lie? Well, it's 20 to one. Well, 20 so to one? Lie. It's not let, two to let, one. Let him answer. 
What lie are you talking about? Oh, you're, you're, you're breaking up so bad. I really Tell him to call back. Okay. Pay your phone bill and call back. Just uh, give us an, one example of a lie and we'll respond to you. Uh, well, Trump lied today. He lied to us today. What? He told everybody that this was the largest audience to ever watch uh, a speech, his, uh, his State of the Union speech. He said that today, and he lied. He was the he was the fourth largest, but he lies to you. And Marty, you guys don't care. Well, ask, okay, all right, all right. I want to ask questions. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, Patrick wants to ask a question. Go right ahead. So, how have you been harmed by that? Yeah, Rich, how have you been harmed by I mean, what you're perceiving like an as, a, as a high? That I'm sure no other politician ever in American Marty, history ever did that. Back. I can't hear you at all. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, that's a resident liberal. He's very big on global warming. Although with the frigid temperatures we've been having this winter, I think Donald Trump. That's why he doesn't things. call in right now. You know what I mean? He, he waits for warm him. weather to call in. He goes, well, yeah. But what do you think of those uh, Youngstown, Ohio, former Democrats, a year in, salt of the earth people? It's from CNN, so they hate Trump. You know, wall to wall. Uh, what did you What did you think of their response? Well, I mean, uh, last time I was on the show, I, I, I had an article called "Billionaire," uh, sorry, "Blue Collar Billionaire." Yeah. Is this him again? No, go right ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'll manage the uh, a communication. And, and the problem that we have, particularly with the media, is they all come from uh, classy uh, schools, and you know, are used to intellectuals. And here are the numbers in America. There are only 28 percent of the population in the United States that actually has a college education. That leaves 72 percent of the population that are just like the people in Youngstown. And the fact is because Trump was taken around to the building sites by his father, he got to know the blue collar people. Those are the people he connected with. Those are the people he listened to in terms of how they communicated with each other. Mm -hmm. And that's how he communicates with them too. Secondly, in terms of lying, there's a difference between exaggeration and aspirational exaggerations. Like I didn't have sex with that woman. Yeah, and uh, I never had any email that I received or sent that had confidentiality. I mean, part of this is uh, you get back and, and I'll be the first one to say I didn't like either Hillary or Trump. Trump was never really a Republican. He'd given more money to the Clintons than he ever gave to a Republican. I thought of, originally he was a stalking horse for Hillary. Got in there, he, he dished all the Republican candidates, and I thought, well, this guy's in here actually to disrupt the entire Republican approach of, of having a winning team. Yeah. I mean, I was I was a Kasich Rubio ticket. I thought that was the best ticket we probably would ever have. Yeah. And I thought he was, even after he got the nomination, was there really to actually throw it to Hillary. As we all know, even he didn't think he was going to win on, on uh, election night. And I went back and I listened to all of the broadcasts from election night. Florida wasn't called until 11.30. And even then, everybody, everybody said there's still no path to the presidency. It was Hillary's. It was 1.30 when Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania put him over the top. Yeah. And the reason they did that is because of the reopening of Hillary's email by Comey pushed enough of the Democrats into the independents, and they voted for the Greens and the Libertarians. Hmm. But that took away enough from Hillary that Trump actually got the plurality in those states, and that's how he became president of the United States. And I will, def I will defy anybody out there, any one of you, to explain how the Russians could have figured that out so that he would win like that. And the other reason for that is we all know about the picture of Flynn next to Putin. Yes. Most people don't know who else was at that table. Do you know who else was at the table? About Hillary Clinton. No. no. Um, it was Stein, the head of the Green Party. Well, that was it. That was it. Yeah. Now yeah. remember, after the loss of the blue wall, as they called uh, Michigan, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and Pennsylvania, she was the one that suddenly got six million dollars, and nobody's ever asked where she got that because they didn't have that much money in the entire campaign mm. to actually ask for a recount of those votes. And it found out the only undercounts was in Michigan, and they were for Trump. They undercounted Trump. Though. They undercounted Trump. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. if we're going to talk about the collusion, 
with Russia, mm -hmm. which is, no, first of all, there, there is no definition of collusion, and there's no legal definition because there's no law against it, uh -huh. in which case we're doing all of this for what? There's not a crime involved. So Mueller is there to actually find a crime that he can actually then mm -hmm. try to impeach Trump because collusion isn't a crime. Yeah. But even if it were, let's assume it was, you have to have pointed to evidence that not just that he had passing conversations with Russians, or even if he talked to Putin every single day, but what the Russians did had a material effect on the outcome of the election. Yeah. Well, we know that can't possibly be true. Yeah. Well, I actually have, there's a ray of hope for the liberals, by the way. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> yeah. So there, there's this author, last name of Wolf, and he wrote a children's fiction book that was about as credible as Fusion <laughs> GPS, right? Yeah. And uh, so that all the liberals are salivating, saying how wonderful this is and how incredible it is and how it's going to take down Trump. So what happened this morning on Morning Joe? You probably don't know because nobody even watches the yeah, show, yeah. right? <laughs> but, it, you know, he's got his girlfriend down there who, you know, whose face is pretty rigid because it's solid plastic. But um, so she... She actually throws that author off the show because he's not credible. Yeah. So, I mean, see, the left really loves these un unsubstantiated, non-verified documents that they can just hang their hat on. Yeah. And that, that's what it's about. So, there's yeah, real. Let me add something. We get a chance. Put that yeah. mean on. That would be good. Mark, yes. Here we go. Yeah, I know, I know the rest of the story is a lie, but I want Trump gone, and I don't know what else to do. That's, that's pretty that's much it. it. That's, that's it. pretty it. much it. He was elected in the, with a blue collar, and I agree with you, and... Uh, he, and he still was supported by the blue collar. He yes. was elected oh, by yeah. the, 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 the margin, right? He was yeah, elected by them on the on margins. That said, they, they, they're tired of yeah. the polish. Uh -huh. I, was, I was, you know, I was at the, at the beginning, I was from the beginning with Donald Trump. Even when he was less than 1%, I believe he should become the president. I don't know, because I'm Greek, I'm coming from, <laughs> from Greece, you know. I thought he should become the president because, you know, we have seen a lot of politicians in Europe, they are nonsense, and yeah. they all talk, and they don't do their job. And they don't have any business sense. So they had seen that, you know. I and we keep on seeing that in Europe all the time. They lived for here, thirty years in Europe. So you know, you know, all the politicians they talk, 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 but they never, you know, they never have a strategy to materialize and to take action and to do things. He's actually doing that now, right? And I was supporting from the beginning. But let me tell you that if he start screwing things up, he's not doing the right thing. I'll be the the first one to criticize him. I'm going to be the first one, and I'm saying that to the liberals, to the uh, you know, to the Democrats, to the Republicans. Yeah. If he does do a good job, you know, I'm not going to be with Donald Trump, right? If he's not going to help us, if he's not going to be with us, with the people, I'm not going to be supporting him anymore, and that's only fair. So we have to give him a chance since he started, and he's doing a great job for a year. Support him; he's your president, right? So. If he doesn't do well, I'll be the first one. Well, I, I, I have to, I have to bear my soul here. I wasn't for him. I said it before, uh, because he does. There's quote, redemption. Though. He does lie. There's a difference. But as I said, there is a right. downright lie. You know something, and you're saying obvious. There's a difference between exaggerating your your experiences and your your uh, accomplishments, which he does all the time. As if no politician has ever done that, especially President Obama and Clinton. When we talk about lies, there's this book that came out, and all the liberals were all excited about this book, Fire and Fury, uh, I think yeah. it was. And this is uh, this is that talking you about need far to right again, uh, uh, talking yeah. about things you didn't know firsthand, saying you believed it was true, but you had no proof that the president had an affair with someone in his administration. He Yes. It's pretty much what you said. Then you yes. kind of led and indicated if you follow the breadcrumbs, you can figure out who it was. Well, getting nervous. Did After a lot of rumors him? came out, you know, it was speculation that you met Nikki Haley and you said she's embraced it. Don't you find that absolutely irresponsible at this point in time where we are as a society when you're talking about a woman who's a high-profile woman in the well, Trump administration let me, let me, let me to go Trump. after her without any evidence, without any facts? It just seems that it is so irresponsible. Well, first thing, I didn't go after her and secondly what I um, what I certainly what I meant was I found it puzzling that she would deny something she was not accused of wait a minute can I just step in here let's let's put this next question uh, the entire credibility of your book which was written really quickly excuse you, me your book yes uh, let's 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 put it on this next question do you regret 
inferring anything about Nikki Haley? I, I, I didn't infer anything about Nikki Haley. What I inferred was that the president is, um, um, is that m many of the people are Oh, it's rebooting. I hate Around the president, idea. believe he is still involved with various women. No, but you said she spent a lot of time and private time with. I, I, I got it. That's, that's, got true. It. that's I, I totally, it. totally. Uh, I mean, that's exactly what people report. And now, and specifically, that was about her bid to become the Secretary of State. So everywhere in the White House, okay. they were suddenly in a, in a, in in, in quite a panic He's that gone. this was actually no. happening, Michael, which is why they pushed. She out. has embraced it. Um, I, I'm going to go as far as to say that you might be having a fun time playing a little game, dancing around this, but you're slurring a woman. It's disgraceful. It's uh, and and um, Mika again. She has been accused of nothing. She has decided to deny what she has not been accused of. Right. Certainly, I didn't accuse her of this. Mm -hmm. Wait, are you, are you I, suggesting I, you that? Are you suggesting the language is not uh, ambiguous in any way, and the, the things that you've said and the way you've Come on. stated? Are, are you kidding? You're on the set of Morning Joe. We don't BS here. Well, <laughs> I, what's you know, read me the language? language. Tell, are you me. kidding me? He's I'm saying, not reading well, you anything. If Martin you don't get it, if you don't get what we're talking. About, I, I, I'm sorry. This is, this is awkward. Is. You're here on the set with us, but we're done. Michael Wolf, thank you. We're gonna go to break now. See, Bye, there's actually hope right for the left there. I told you. I told you. I told you. you. Hey, can we? That Fast and Furious. That was that was the big book. Oh, uh, all the truth about Trump was coming out. If you do, if you can't believe the um, uh, dossier, you can be believe Fast and Furious. Okay, so can we pivot here for just a second? Sure. We're gonna play a little Jeopardy. It's okay. kind of a one question game, all right. and it's uh, winning for uh, a thousand points. Okay. okay, here's the question: all right. How many companies? Since the new tax laws went into effect, he'll know. But go ahead. Have either paid bonuses or increased wages. Uh, do do two hundred seventy-four do, or do, over three hundred, depending do, on which do, one do. you want to do. So it's three hundred. It's written right there. You two. No, I didn't. Three hundred. No, he, no, he said. No, he said no, I don't know. Get out of his I email, get, please. I gave you a list last time. Okay, but here's what really troubles me. Remember when I mentioned that you know the lollipop kid uh, Robert <coughs> Reich came out you know when after the tax cuts? Pronounce Robert Rush. Yeah, 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 right, right, right. So he comes out, and in his arrogant way, he says, you know, these, these things aren't going to matter to people. You know, what's a few hundred dollars here and there? And then Nancy Pelosi comes out and says, so they got a thousand dollars. That's not going to go very far. I believe she refers no, to as that Crumbs. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, talk Crumbs. about being out of touch in Washington. So let me just read you what some people have said about the real people that have said about their tax cuts. Mm -hmm. Here's a woman, Julia Ketchum, at Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Pleasantly surprised when she got an extra dollar fifty a week in her paycheck because that paid for her Costco membership. So when people there sit there, you know, Nancy says a thousand bucks isn't going to go far. Tell that to her at a dollar fifty a week. Bet something to her. Mm -hmm. Let me let me mention some of, some of the other ones. I mean, here's a guy, Todd Anderson in Texas. He and his fiance both got an extra two hundred dollars in their paycheck. You know what? They got baby costs coming on because they got a baby on the way. Yeah. Meant a lot to them. So the list goes on and on and on. And the real terror in that speech when he gave the other night was he used the word we about a thousand times. <laughs> and, you know, I, I think it was the New York Times originally or Washington Post originally had uh, the, 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 te the headline for the, the next uh, edition of the paper that. Trump goes bipartisan, and there was so much of an outrage by the left that they had to change it. They had to change it. Had to change it. Couldn't can't, be can't bipartisan. Can't give any credit at all. And the, the terror is, see, I, I, I genuinely believe that when you divide people, you raise up government. When you unite people, there's no need for government. Mm -hmm. So the left, the liberals, and Obama always divided people, white, black, young, old, gay, straight, fat, You thin. must be one of those American dreamers, I think. <laughs> oh, I dream it every night. Yeah. Give me so, five on it, baby. We love dreams. <laughs> So think about that. Absolutely. He, in that speech, what did he do? He united people. When he went to Davos, what did he do? He united people. Yeah. That's why the, that's why the liberals and Nancy and, and company couldn't smile. Yeah. Why is that? They're doomed. 
And all of a sudden, here come the rating polls. Doom, doom, doom. It's funny as as when he announces that black unemployment That's has not why never Nancy's been. Nancy's doing that. <coughs> well, she can't smile because of no, rigid Na face. Nancy is doing that because she's worth $30 million. So, of course, $1,000 doesn't mean anything to her. Now, they, now all these politicians go into Washington for. Come out wealthy. How, how does it happen with a uh, public service? Can you explain that to me? How, how yeah. could it be public service? Well, there are no collusion laws magic. for them. And they end up uh, to be millionaires. It's magic. And they don't want businessmen to, to, to do it. It's magic. <laughs> And they're all in favor of the poor. Yes. And that's far as the uh, rich. And the, as far they're as all rich, according yeah, yeah. to their own definition. And as far as the got. tax reform, as far as the tax reform, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact is that it's going to cut uh, federal uh, revenue. Uh, by $205 billion in 2018. Mm -hmm. So that's a big amount. And that money is going to be, you know, is money in, in consumers, consumers, people's hands to sure. for spending. So that's the yeah. truth. Rich, what are we getting wrong here? Why is uh, America on a downward spiral with Donald Trump leading us over the cliff? He's what, a closet what are, what, are we, what are we missing here, Rich? Please, enlighten us. Well, what you're, what you're missing, quite simply, is that 83% of the tax cuts went to the top 1% okay. of the economy. All right. Okay. All right. What, Trump did, what Trump did was he took care of all his billionaire buddies and his corporations, and you guys are boasting about a mere pity being given to these people, but yet you don't talk about the thousands of employees that lost their jobs at the PJs, that lost their jobs at Walmart, and Marty, most importantly, why aren't these people being paid a living wage? Why is, why is everybody treated as a sub How many have died? Rich, are you, oh, there? Is Rich, oh, Rich are you employed or are you still in the basement? No, yeah, I mean, so what's the, what's the problem? Okay, all right. You're giving us a lot to chew on. Our guests want to respond. But thanks thanks for the question. See, the real problem... Uh, what about that? Well, hang what on. about the, what you have to say? Hang on. The real problem with Rich, though, is he's terrified that jobs are going to become available, and he's going to have to get out of the basement and work. I mean, that's the real issue here. But go ahead. All right. Here, here, are, the, here are the numbers. If you are a family of uh, four, and you make under... $54,000 a year, you pay no taxes anymore. None. Zero. Nada. Because of the doubling of the standard deduction and the child deduction. Now, those people, uh, the number of people under $55,000 is, is 60 million people. That's 40% of all the taxpayers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, they don't get a tax cut because the deductions have wiped them off the taxpayer list. Suddenly, what you're doing is then saying, well, where's the tax who gets tax cuts? The fact of the matter is the top 10% of taxpayers in America, those earning uh, over $200,000, pay 81% of all the taxes in the United States. What a surprise that if you have a tax cut and those that earn between the uh, $55,000 and the $200,000 make up only 5% of all the taxes paid, that those paying the rest of it will actually get more back. They pay the money. It's their money. What is this idea that somehow uh, only the workers should ever get a tax break? The, the workers have gotten more tax breaks over the last 20 years than you can imagine. And I, you know, I think it's a great balance that the top 10% pay 80% of all the taxes. We workers don't pay it. And the reason why the Democrats want you to believe this is because they're the ones that built our budget to $6 trillion a year. Let me explain what $6 trillion means. $6 trillion means that the federal government is the third largest country by GDP. Hmm. Only China and the whole of the United States have GDPs bigger than the federal budget. Hmm. Yep. And who pays that? It isn't you. Eris. So you well, got. Uh, what I get, what we got here now is this uh, far right wing um, uh, politician going on about these fat cats getting breaks with taxes. It's only two minutes, but but I think you'll see. 
far right wing politician just out to help us. <laughs> the worst deficit comes from a recession. And if we can take the proper action in the proper time, this can be the most important step we could take to prevent another recession. That is the right kind of a tax cut, both for your family budget and the national budget, resulting from a permanent basic reform and reduction in our rate structure, a creative tax cut, creating more jobs and income, and eventually more revenue. And the right time for that kind of bill, it now appears, in the absence of an economic crisis today, and if the job is to be done in a responsible way, is January 1963. Such a bill will be presented to the Congress for action next year. It will include an across-the-board, top-to-bottom cut in both corporate and personal income taxes. Imagine that. It will include long-needed tax reform that logic and equity demand. And it will date that cut in taxes to take effect as of the start of next year, January 1963. The billions of dollars this bill will place in the hands of the consumer and our businessmen will have both immediate and permanent benefits to our economy. Every dollar released from taxation that is spent or invested will help create a new job and a new salary. And these new jobs and new salaries... Oh, for the love of Pete. Uh, hold on, hold on. It's just getting to the good part. create other jobs and other salaries. And oh. more customers and more growth for an expanding American economy. Instead of being permanently saddled, with excess planned capacity and the budgetary deficit that is created by this means. Our goal must be full capacity and full employment and the budgetary surpluses that that kind of employment and capacity can produce. By God, JFK is a that Trump Republican. I think that's you what caused global this warming, up. though. It had to be connected. Because right <laughs> after that, we had global warming. I don't know. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable when you start looking back. But another point is, from 1963, it took so many years for a substantial tax reform, right? And, yeah. <laughs> and uh, John Kennedy was uh, referring to that. I, I yeah. want to know, Amazing. literally, I'd like to know what happened to those Democrats. I grew up where being a Democrat was being an American first. Yeah. And you had differing views of social values as far as it came in than Republicans, which typically were on Democratic. I want, I want the Democratic Party of Clinton, Bill Clinton back. Yes. Remember he said, this is not the old Democratic Party anymore. Yeah. But no, he, 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 he did very well. I didn't, well. I didn't well. leave the years. Democrat Party. The Democrat Party. Well, well, he, he, and, <laughs> and to be fair, he did very well in economics. He did very well, right? He did extremely well. well right? Hold on, but Clinton or Reagan? Hang on, Reagan said that. Reagan said that. Yeah, Reagan said that. Don't glamorize the Democrats. That's the party of the Klan. It is. <laughs> Full stop. <laughs> let's let's right. let's go after that, huh? All right, caller. What are your thoughts, uh, Donald Trump? One year in. What are your thoughts? Well, he's done a great job, but the reason uh, what spurred me to call was your video uh, from Kennedy talking about tax cuts um, in lieu of the news that uh, our wonderful governor, Mr. Malloy, wants to put uh, tolls on highways. Just another liberal jive, uh, Democratic response to everything is to raise taxes. That's all they have. Um, God forbid we become a business-friendly state. We're becoming California, and that's probably the worst thing I can say mm. about any state. Your response. Wow, wow, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he must be a carpenter because he hit the nail on the head. Yeah? Yeah. No, no, I think I think. He mentioned California, that's where all the Republicans are coming from, California. <laughs> yeah, they, they should be exiting California as quickly as possible. So a couple other issues on Trump that nobody's yes. really brought up. Um, it, it, it's a mystery to me. The big, and nobody wants to talk about it, but the biggest issue facing America today, and my, one of the biggest, I mean, we got the terrorism and border and all the rest, Social Security. Social Security is completely bust, completely broke, sinking by the minute. How come nobody even says it? So we do the tax cuts, we don't cut spending. That's a big problem. Mm -hmm. Nobody's addressed. Trump's smart enough to know if he says the word Social Security, he's done. He has not said it in the last three years. He will not say it for the next seven. Watch me, I'm right. Uh, two words, second term. You think so? 
But not going to do it if he needs to be facing. No, no, I, it's a real problem. I mean, I hope he does because it has to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And I hope they don't do needs testing. He has to address it at some point. He has to address it. It's not well, I think so. But that's the thing that, that that's yeah. missing. The other thing that's missing right now is where's James Carville? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Where is James Carville? You're out there really somewhere. Care. Well, I mean, it's, mystery, he, it's a mystery when he's the great defender of Clinton and with all these allegations and all these leaders regarding their uh, improprieties. Where's James Carville? Missing, right? Missing yeah. in action. Yeah. Too much knowledge. Yeah. But Lola, really quick, where are uh, your thoughts? Really quick. Yeah, uh, getting back to the, uh, to the tax, to the tax plan. <laughs> yes. I kind of thought Patrick covered that pretty uh, comprehensively. What's the, what's the one? No, no, no. What's the one thing that Republicans never want to do? Republic, Republicans never want to raise the debt. But what did they do with this tax bill? They raised it by five trillion dollars. So. Tell that fat guy at the end. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not get personal whoa, whoa, whoa. here. Listen, oh, we're all mind. doing the best we can. I don't mind when somebody's stupid. Go ahead, go ahead. I don't see your side profile here, Rich. Hey, I didn't call him a stupid fat guy. Whoa, you're, you're, you're stealing a line from Donald Trump when he tweeted about the North Korea. He sounds like Morning Joe. He could get a job there. Why do you want to, put, why do you want to add a $5 trillion debt? Okay, that's a legitimate question. The no, personal attacks aside. And I met you on the street. You're no prize yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for the call, though. Thanks for the call. What about that? Are we, are we blowing the budget? Well, I don't know. Where they're talking. This is the same guy who talked about lying, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Well, the estimate from the CBO was $1.5 trillion over 10 years. It wasn't $5 trillion. You should start learning your numbers before you start uh, saying silly things. Secondly, that didn't take in consideration either the repatriation of the $3 trillion back to the United States or any of these other aspects that are growing the economy. It was a straightforward, if none of those things happen, and if the GDP was 2.6%, we would have a $1.5 trillion deficit over 10 years. That works out to $150 billion a year. Trump has already made up $450 billion of that deficit in the first year, so he's covered at least his first term in terms of that. So yeah. you should really look into the facts yeah. before you start saying that Trump lies. And let me add here that he has created $7 trillion in the stock market in, in the new wealth, right, within a year, which is amazing. I call That's what the, winning. All the, all, yeah, and that was going to be in consumer spending, right? Well, That's uh, if I can get back also to yeah. the idea of, of the rich and, and the workers, because I said this two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I came in with a graph and I showed that most Democrats, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to call them the progressive socialists, have no clue about who owns America, specifically who owns corporate America. The fact is that the retirement funds and the pension funds of the middle, working middle class owns Wall Street. 63% of all the shares of all the companies on the NASDAQ and the NYSE are owned by the retirement funds. And today I sent you a, a, a thing about pension and investments. Yeah. It showed. You didn't have a thousand bucks to get that three email or something? Billion, three billion, yes, a thousand dollar subscription. Yeah. Three billion. I felt like uh, I was stealing. To something. date, you're talking about the thousand dollars. What you're not pointing out is there have been three billion dollars contributed to uh, corporate uh, pension funds for their uh, uh, for their retirement, the workers' retirements. Yeah. The other thing which is never it's talked about. It's helping California too, like mm -hmm. the teacher retirement. Oh, that I mean, the roof. if you look at all the unfunded liabilities in the United States, uh, Connecticut is number three, only surpassed by New Jersey and Illinois. But the stock market on fire helps that. that, that California's CalPERS earned 1.1% on their $300 billion retirement fund three years ago, then 0.6%, 1.6% last year. They're up 11% already. Thank you, Donald Trump. No, no, you're never getting any thank you. Donald you but, never will, but, but uh, they ought to. And you're talking about people who are, are a lying. Rising, a rising tide, tide lives on both. And then, and then the inflation remains low, right? So there's more, <laughs> more room for expansion. Well, that, that's going to rise. Yeah, so that's going to rise. But for the time being, it is it is uh, relatively low, and that that allows 
more, uh, you know, more more room for expansion right. in, that, in that business cycle. Right. We don't know how it's gonna, how much, it's gonna, how long it's gonna last. But here's one thing they don't tell you about the thousand dollars, two thousand, three thousand uh, dollars. Most of the younger workers, if they were wise, and a lot of them are doing so, are actually putting it into their 401k. And the reason why that's important is companies match it dollar for dollar, and, and actually lots of companies are actually increasing their matching yes. on 401k. Well, let me explain that to you. If you're a 30-year-old and you put $1,000 into your 401k, and the company gives you $1,500 to match it, that's $2,500 now. Yes. And by the time you retire at 65... Right now it's 3%, right? 3%. Uh, so it, they're going to increase to 5 or 6%. If, right? you, if you retire at the age of 65, that yeah. $1,000 you receive today will be worth $25,000 at the age of 65. If you hang around until you're 70, you draw it out, it'll be $45,000. If you're so, lucky. So look, this yeah. isn't peanuts. Mm -hmm. Only yeah. somebody who has $30 million or more, all of the leaders, all of the leaders of the Democratic Party are the rich. That's true. So, hey, uh, okay, can we just uh, shift and, and talk about another area where Trump is changing the face of America? Yes. And people aren't really talking about this. But um, Trump, in, in his first year in office, set a record for uh, federal appeal court um, uh, nominees getting approved. Mm -hmm. It's a record. He has filled 58, he has 58 nominees that he submitted likely to pass. At least 23 of those have passed, the ballots passed. Then he's got 80 more positions to fill. Mm -hmm. He is reshaping the face of America for years, I mean, for maybe the next 30 or 40 years to come. Now think about, think about the impact of this. So when Trump puts on a legitimate travel ban from terrorist nations that were um, uh, you know, targeted by the Obama administration, listed by the Obama administration as terrorist states, mm -hmm. When Trump does it, okay, there's, he's got to be a racist. When Obama did it, it was okay. But so Trump says, okay, we're going to limit you know, people coming from these states. And what happens? Liberal judges in flaming liberal states out left, or out left, yeah, out west. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do they do? They block them. So what he's doing effectively is reshaping America for the next 30 years to come. So hopefully common sense will prevail. I think it's a beautiful thing. And the Constitution. You know, it's been rough because tonight we've really built up Donald Trump. And there's so many people out there watching that have a, du a different impression of Donald Trump. And they, they're confident that he's a crook. And they're sure that Mueller and Comey and the FBI are going to get him and they're going to take him down. This is just a little, a little respite for them. A little something to keep them encouraged, to tell them to just keep the faith. Here we go. Flynn's on the run. Okay. Dog going on the Jack and Now look, Comey on the left there. He's laughing. Oh, yeah. There's Bannon. He's gone. For a moment. The Leaker. There's the Leaker. There's the Leaker. He's a Leaker. <laughs> you wanted me so. No collusion. In case you'd she, she, she. say no. And I think maybe this is kind of like you kind of left with the impression that Trump's son turned that man. But there are men I suddenly knew. Trump. Did they finally get Trump? Does he finally get called off? I lie to you. Let's see. Russia. Oh, they got him. This is how it's going to work. Liberals out there, he's going to get hauled off. He's going to do the perk walk. 
That's what's going to happen. Just a little something for the liberal friends out there. Keep the faith. That's what's going to happen. Because that Trump, that, that dossier is true. And there is global warming. And, and Nancy Pelosi is really, really smart. And the fact that the Black Caucus booed when they said that black unemployment is at a historic low, it's because they really care about you. That's what's going on. Okay, this is the uh, lightning round. We're going to start with you, and we're going to go down. What do we need to know? You have a minute to tell us. What we need to know is that um, Donald Trump uh, is has our full support as long as he's doing okay. If he's not doing okay, he's not going to have our support. So that's for Democrats, Republicans, for everybody. And so far, he has proven that he's doing the right things. Five are going to be the forces that are going to be, you know, in the near future, and the economy is going to be, you know, uh, of course, the major factor. And uh, as they said, the Democrats before, uh, George Stephanopoulos and the other guys that you mentioned before, agree. Uh, but you like those guys, yeah, yeah. Right? Well, must be in shipping. Keep, keep it simple, Steve. He, he, right? he, he, he got said, off the reservation. It is the economy. It is the economy. So uh, as long as there is stronger, stronger growth uh, abroad, right? Um, um, the energy prices are stabilizing. Uh, rising stock valuations, uh, no threats to the global economy from uh, terrorism, etc., right. and the labor market that is doing well. So Donald Trump is going to be a favorite. If he, if that changes, and you know he is not doing more additional stuff to build up the economy, so we're going to change too. So this, this is intended to make Rich's head burst. Okay. And this is uh, regarding what is perceived as unsettled science, the whole myth of global warming, a.k.a. Cl man-made climate change. Well, the expanding ice cap is proof of global yeah. warming. Yeah, well, 100%. And famines and droughts. And droughts. <laughs> famines and droughts. You yeah. got them both covered there, right? Right. Yeah. There were, last year, 485 scientific papers published that undermined the consensus on global warming. It is not settled science. The only thing that's settled is it's a myth. And that's you're why they now call it climate change. Yeah. My final is this. Donald Trump did something unique as a politician. He said what he was going to do, and that's what he's doing. Wow. No <laughs> wonder they hate him. Be, Be, uh, he did it. Uh, 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 it never and, happened before. And the final, my final <laughs> point is this. As long as the alternative to Trump is Nancy Pelosi Chuck Schumer, Maxine Waters, and Elizabeth Warren. Trump looks brilliant. Pocahontas. By comparison. 3% growth, 40% rise in the stock market, out of the, the Paris Climate Accord, TPP, and soon uh, renegotiating NAFTA, becoming energy independent. Neil Gorsuch, a great Supreme Court justice, remaking the ju judiciary, as you said, tax cut, ending Obamacare mandate, thank goodness for that, mm. defeating ISIS, remaking the Middle East. Stay tuned on that, because he's moved the, the mm. capital from uh, Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Can we give him a standing ovation That's on the show? That's a beautiful or? thing. China helping uh, with Rocket Man. And by the way, the South Koreans and the North Koreans are going to the, the Olympics. Pretty yeah. friendly. You know, I'm telling you, you, you show a little backbone, all of a sudden China... Mark, uh, let's uh, find somebody yeah. better than Donald Trump to replace him. Let's illegal him illegal immigration down 75%. They haven't put one brick on one mortar on the wall. It's already <laughs> down 75%. Lowest in 42 years without the wall. If you told me this a year ago, you, they'd say you would be crazy. Add to that, lowest uh, minority unemployment in the history Stock both, market going through the wall, and, and over 300 companies giving out bonuses. It's a good day. Thank you for joining the Marty Eiser Show. We'll be right back here next week where we may have Steve Upsitnik, a candidate for the state uh, governor of Connecticut. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time.